Hey y'all, I'm out here at the Semper Fresh Garden tonight. Earlier today, um, we were out here and I saw lots of things I needed to come take care of this evening. So I'm back checking on the chickens and putting them up for the night. And I've got some stuff to harvest out here. So let's get in the garden, y'all. Now a couple of nights ago, Chris came out and um, he got a lot of the squash bugs out so tonight i am going to since it's been raining the last couple days i'm actually going to come in here and spray the dawn um liquid dawn soap and water concoction that i made it was recommended by a lot of different blogs and i'm actually going to spray that tonight to see if that helps with the squash bugs it's supposed to kill them on contact and I actually see some eggs up there so I may spray there too when I pulled up this evening um, I caught one of the hens in here scratching around it doesn't look like she did any damage looks like she just got up in here unless she was over here in this area but had to chase her out of here which may be one of the reasons why we're not really getting um, a big um, growth in this area right here because they're scratching around. I was trying to look in this sunflower to see what all was happening in here. I might need to pull that guy. This one just bloomed. It's so pretty. Now, my understanding of this uh, mix that I have sprayed, it is one to three um, Dawn to water. And it's Dawn uh, liquid dish soap, um, one tablespoon to three tablespoons. And they're supposed to kill them on impact. Um... I mean, I'm about to find out if it really works. What I read told me to do it um, in the evening time. Uh, you can spray it at the base. You can spray it on the leaves. But to spray the dish spray, the your spray here. Wow, well, this thing's jammed up now. And um, that it's supposed to kill them relatively quick but I mean I don't know um, the also the advantage for me doing it now would be that um, it's been raining all day and they're out trying they're out on top of the leaves trying to um, trying to dry off so that should benefit me I'm, I'm gonna check this out see if it works if it works I'll definitely let y'all know before I go home because I'm plan planning on um, doing a little bit of cleaning up and weeding and tying up but I wanted to spray all this first so I could see what's going on here and see if I can put a dent in this uh, problem that we have Chris said that he got a lot of them he said he killed several hundred of each. Pro he said he probably killed about 40 adults and several hundred of each of the other stages. So, again, I'm just uh, going to look around. He said he did all three sections where we have squash. So, I don't, we have four sections. So, I'm not sure <laughs> which sections he did. But, uh, like I said, I figured this is just soap and water. So, it's not going to hurt the squash plants. I uh, might as well try it if it can save my pumpkins and they're laying eggs on the gourds so if it can save the gourds um, and the watermelons possibly if they get over in the watermelons and hopefully salvage some of my squash then awesome so I probably should have warned you that if you're not really into seeing bugs and stuff getting killed that this might not be the video for you so this might not be the video for you if you don't like watching the bugs getting killed, but I'm, I will tell you that, um, yeah, this stuff is working. 
Look at him. Gone. This guy looks like he's still kicking. Nope, he might be dead too. So, I'm just gonna go to town. And I will say kudos to Mr. Beatty because he did a great job picking off um, the bugs the other day. So, he was out here, I think he's, I think it was two nights ago. And he was out here for quite a while and um, he told me that he picked off all those bugs. So he did a wonderful job. I see a bunch crawling up right there and we'll get those guys. Okay, so I got all of the squash plants that I saw infestation on sprayed down. What I didn't do the other day is take care of this powdery mildew and I forgot about it. Um, so let me get this pow these uh, leaves that have powdery mildew out of here and into the burn pile. So I'm taking quite a bit off the plant um, in the hopes that it prevents spread on the other leaves. There may be a couple that I need to take here soon. Obviously I can't take every leaf off of this plant, but now I'm going to take this out to the burn pile. I will sanitize my hands and my shears because I don't want to get things mixed up and spread around. So it's been a hot minute since I've seen one of our honeybees hanging out in here. I've got some lemon cucumbers hanging in here that I need to harvest and another ugly one I need to cut and I wish I knew what was doing this because again I've not seen anything over here except stink bugs just I'm just confused ruining my fruit Is that grasshoppers? What is it? This one too. This one actually looks split. No, this one got chewed on too. Dang it. So I went ahead and pulled this one a little early because I didn't want it to get ate up too. Sunrise bumblebee is still producing even though the bottom part of the plant looks a little sick. I guess I need to start collecting these ground cherries since they're not tomatillas. I wonder if the cucumber beetles are doing this. I don't know. Look how cute these little guys are. And y'all, I don't want to jinx myself, but I may actually get some Roma tomatoes here. I'm not sure. For sure but I got a couple that are ripening that do not have in blossom rot and a couple that haven't been munched on like look at this guy just completely ate up it's down in there nothing watch some kind of freaking demogorgon come out we've been watching stranger things again Ava loves that show She's two. She loves Stranger Things because it's just the right amount of scary. I mean, she loves scary, but for me, it's just the right amount of scary that I'm not worried about her watching it over and over. See, and these are just not succumbing to the pest damage like the other one is. So there is something over there in that section that is just, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick these and let them har uh, ripen in the house. And I know I talked about it being a weird tomato year on one of my last um, posts, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. This fruit I just picked is the same exact plant as this one. I, I don't get it. I mean, I'm picking different type of tomatoes 
off of the same plant and it's not getting mixed up. Like there's no mix up. I've checked the stem, I followed it all the way down to the base and it is the same tomato plant producing different fruit. I've never had that happen before. So that's why I said it's a weird tomato year. Plus all of my tomatoes are coming in a little. What are you doing in my garden, Cletus? I left Cletus out because Clayton's been kind of picking on him since the other roosters are gone. I thought that maybe, uh, you know, he and Clayton would get along really well, but Clayton has taken over as the dominant rooster. What you doing, bud? You want to go back in with everybody else? Hmm? Okay, now I know I probably have some okra to harvest. I did see some giant okra um, earlier today. There's one right here. Look at this. God. I just don't know. And you can't, like, really leave these things on. Because you want the plant to keep producing. So if you leave them on, it'll be like, oh, we've got plenty. No need to grow more okra so you definitely need to get it um harvested as soon as you find it even if it's gotten too big you just need to get it to get it out of here oh, fuzzy fuzzy wuzzy let's see here this one has not produced as much but looking in this big again thank goodness those yellow jackets are gone from this area because they were just worrying me to no end I was so scared to stick my hand down in here all right and this is an example of what I was talking about the other day on the different variety of okra that's going to be about your size that you want for Clemson spineless and this is a different variety so yeah Where's he think he's going? You better get in here and find these uh, grasshoppers, Cletus. Damn. Guess he is looking for bugs, isn't he? Good job, Cletus. But I think I had another variety that I wanted to show y'all that's different. And this one's normally not, uh, doesn't grow crooked like this. It normally grows pretty straight, but depending on the plant, um, the way that it's growing out. So this one is an old Alabama red and you can see that this pod looks a little squattier Let me pick it. Well, I didn't have to so see how this one's just a little bit fatter um, This the each variety is going to be a little different You definitely don't want them getting too long But you could just squeeze them while they're on the vine to see if they're soft. Do you want them to be soft? um the Clemson spineless, in my opinion, seem to be the ones that get, that grow the fastest. That's just my opinion based on growing different types of okra. But, um, I think this one is emerald velvet. See, I don't know. That's, I've got one here and here. I think I've got three in here. I've got one here that is just now starting to flower got this one and this one here I don't know they've all kind of grown differently and I had a hard problem with the germination oh, I'm seeing some uh, what is this on my sunflower leaves ants and aphids I wonder if that dawn soap works on them but anyway I, I've had some issues getting the okra to start in this bed and over here with my cabbage. Look at him. What's he doing over there? Cletus! What are you doing? He don't know what he's doing. Oh yeah. Anyway, you're going to pick your okra when it's soft because if it's if it's too hard, um, it's not going to taste good. It's going to taste like you're eating a piece of bark. 
no matter which way you cook it. Um, even if you cook it in a gumbo, it's still going to taste bad. But Okay, I did see some tomatoes earlier that needed to be harvested. Um, I saw that these were split. Nothing I can do about it with all this rain except pick them and let them ripen, which I have been doing. I've, got, I've had a pretty good success um, with picking them early. This one split too. I want to go see if the chickens will eat them. Like I said, sometimes they'll eat them. Sometimes they just don't care. I'm like sticking my face into a spider web. Ugh. Okay, so I'm going back through here and um, the bugs that got sprayed are dead and some of the new bugs have come out that were hiding, so I'm gonna spray them now. I'm all about trying any kind of organic method of pest control. I'm in a lot of gardening groups. I had to actually unfollow a lot of them because they were getting to be a little overwhelming as far as um, just the content and new gardeners posting the same question back to back and people getting mad at them. I mean, people don't know. They wanna, they wanna ask a question and get the answers, but um, it just got to be a little bit too much for me. I already got enough stuff going on. I don't need to worry about people arguing in a gardening group about somebody asking the same question that someone else just asked. But anyway, a lot of people were asking, what is this bug and how do I get rid of it? And it was a squash bug. And a lot of people were recommending sevens. And I'm not knocking if you're going to use non-organic pest control. But we have bees. And I actually like for, for not only our honeybees to stay alive, but I'd like for the other bees to stay alive because they pollinate my garden. They do all the work. So definitely not going to um, be putting anything down that'll kill them. And I know there's safe ways to do it and all of that, but um, yeah, I'm just not, I'm just not for that. And again, that's just my opinion. Okay, I was trying to see if I could get this beef steak straighten back up it's getting so heavy and this ground is so damp that I don't think I'm gonna be able to keep it up I may pick this one and let it ripen oh inside but it kind of on the side or is that a bug that might be a bug yeah, that's a bug. Gross. The chickens will like it. But this one is be uh, red beef steak. It's an heirloom, obviously, because of the fluted look. Okay, well, they didn't like me throwing that one in there because it was big. I'm not sure if they're going to eat it. They're kind of ignoring it. Okay, I think I'm almost done for the night. I have this... German Johnson that's starting to blush here. Hope nothing messes with it so I can get a good good one off of there. And uh, my Golden Jubilee are still coming strong. But no, no color turning yet. And they're still producing a blooms up here. I need to run back in the back real fast and check on everything. Check on all of those and then I think I'm going to head out. Uh oh, something. Something has collapsed in over here. These ground cherries, I guess. Need to tie this one up. This one is another German Johnson. And my black prince just got ate up. Well, I don't know. This one is the Black Prince. He's just hanging out with someone else. There's a couple blossoms coming. So maybe, maybe it'll make it. 
This San Marzano may be, may be okay too. I'll take it home and look at it really well. Some of my San Marzano started getting in blossom rot, so I haven't harvested any of those in quite a while. I've got some new flowers coming out on this hot salsa pepper plant. I'm just letting everything go at this point. Um, like I said, I think if I can keep bugs off of it, I might have a couple of um, Roma that I get to harvest. I don't know. We'll see, I guess. And then um, this one that I think is a pink brandy wine is still producing flowers too. So we will see. I was going to tie these up, but I'm going to need Chris's help because I don't think I can do it without breaking the stems because I'm too short. Anyway. Okay, everything's looking okay out here. Aside from the fact that there's no high tunnel in it, Mr. Beatty. Not a lot I can do right now, except watch them grow. All right, y'all, I'm going to uh, head home. Won't be able to come out in the morning because Mr. Bo is going to get his license. Hopefully. <laughs> um, so, thank y'all for joining me tonight. See y'all next time. Bye, y'all.